head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, the team that nobody wanted to face when the playoffs started. I was concerned that Seattle not being able to play at home through the playoffs would make them a little less intimidating. Well, they beat the Redskins, and now they move on to Atlanta. Pete Carroll, the head coach. When did you know you had something a little bit different this year, Pete? Well, we um, you know, we had had a really good uh, finish to last season, and uh, with our young guys kind of growing up, we had we we could have won all of our games down the stretch, and and uh, we had a sense about it then. And we, you know, with a really young team coming back, knowing that they would grow a bunch, uh, we thought we could have have something good. Then we had a very cool draft where we thought we hit in a number of areas that fit us. And then when we saw, I, I, you know, that that was we we had the feeling going in, and then we just had to figure out a quarterback situation, which uh, you know is kind of topical right now with what, what Russell Wilson has done. Who made that decision to draft Russell Wilson? It, John Schneider was really on it the whole time, and and uh, he loved him, and and we we went through it. You know, he went and saw him play a couple times in person last year, just to see him. We brought him in with the thought of you know as we went to the Senior Bowl and all of that that we really liked the kid, and and. Uh, and the more we were around him, we just sold. So, really, I got to give John all the credit on that one. I, I, I love that he was so fired up about it, and I love the kind of the, sh- the chance that we took because he was such an unusual, unique player. And uh, so, I was totally behind it. But I got to give all the credit to John. And what Russell Wilson had talked about with us as he was going to Seattle, he just said, "I hope that the job is open." Sometimes coaches will say it, not really mean it. But at what point did you say, I will open this up so Russell Wilson can actually earn the starting job over a guy that you paid good money, you know, and bring him in from Green Bay? Yeah, well, you know, Dan, the, 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 really the central theme in our program is competition. And if, if I mean it, you know, in which I've always think, thought that I meant it, then it just played itself out. And, and we, that was how we talked about every position. And so it just extended itself to the quarterback spot. And most people, you know, just think conventionally, that you, you know, okay, you pay the guy the money, you go free agent and, and all that, that's what you're doing. And I, I love what Matt Flynn is all about. But it, it was a competition. We, we figured out a schedule how to do it during the camp and, and, and evened out the reps. And before you know it, you know, Russell just started taking off and just doing some great things, and he won it over. He won us all over. If that was a preseason game, given the field conditions, would you have played that game? Yeah, we'd have played it. I would never not play it. But uh, you know, it, it, it was it was really messy. You know, our kicker our kicker pulled his calf plant on his plant foot. You know, in the game too. You know, and so I, I don't. I was not, and I'm not standing here blaming the field for that. Those things. I, the field just was not good enough to you know for the quality of the game. So you know, but what I got nothing to say about it. That's just the way we felt about it. When did you know Griffin was uh, not Griffin? Uh, watching him on TV the week before, and and uh, you know I think just seeing him you know play on, on on the tube, you know you could tell that he just wasn't able to push and go and all of that, and you know there was conversations coming out that he was fully back and recovered, and I didn't believe it. I just didn't think a guy could recover from a knee like that in that short a time after he got pounded a little bit that night. So uh, he looked good in warmups, and then when he took off the first time, then you knew you know yeah okay this is what it is, and and we had we had a game plan counting on the fact that he wouldn't be able to run, and it, it hopefully you know eventually it worked out. Pete Carroll, Seahawks head coach, joining us, Dan Patrick show. I was surprised that he came out for the second half. Were you? Well, we wondered, you know, when he went in, you know, I thought, shoot, maybe he's done. You know, he went, I guess he went into the, you know, in the locker room for a bit. And I, I was asking the question, did he come back? You know, is he back out? You know, and, and I was curious, of course. And, and, uh, and yeah, he's out there. Okay, so he's, he's going. And he, he's such a good football player. He still uh, has mobility even when he was limping as he was, you know, because he's so, so fast. But um, unfortunately for him, you know, he just, just couldn't get back and get right. And, and um, it, it helped us, of course. You don't panic and you're down 14 nothing on the road which I thought was amazing. Why didn't this team get, I don't, maybe inside you're, you're pretty nervous, but you're down 14, nothing. And all of a sudden, you know, you get a touchdown, long drive, and then, you know, you're back in business. Well, you know, it's it's really it's an overall thought that we that we've held for years. It's kind of just part of, you know, the philosophy and the way we think about games and all that. It doesn't matter how you start. And I've been preaching and pounding that for years, all the way through the years at SC and and all that because it, there's it, it just we just don't want to pass judgment in that. Okay, this is one of those games where we're way behind or they're killing us. Because once you set that in motion, then then it's in there, you know. So we we've disciplined ourselves to not think that way, and it just happened to be that's that's the prime example. You know, okay, here it is. Now it's happened. Do we really believe it or not? You know that it doesn't matter how you start, it's how you finish, and and uh, it was a great example for us. And of course, you know we build on that forever. There was always those days, in, in, you know, that happened in years past at SC, and and we were able to to overcome it. You know, we won the national championship game after the opening kickoff.
kickoff was returned against us and stuff, you know. So those kinds of things happen, and you just got to learn from them, and I hope we get we're better because of it. Advice for college coaches, if it's Brian Kelly, Chip Kelly, thinking about going into the NFL, eventually ending up in the NFL. I know your second time around here been far more successful, but that first jump into the NFL, what advice would you give them? Well, I think it's it's a difficult move if you've never been in the NFL. Remember, I was I was you know I was in college for ten years, and I was in the NFL for sixteen years, and then I went back to college for nine years. So, to me, it's coming. It was a whole lot different than it was for for it would be for a guy that hasn't been here. And they can make the jump and they can do it, but it, the, the that lack of familiarity with just kind of how it works, you know, is it makes it much more challenging. So I think the guys that haven't been here should be <laughs> slow to make that decision, you know, and and because they have it they have it really good, or they wouldn't be in consideration. And, and uh, this this can be a very rough business, you know, when you don't get off to a smooth start. You know, look at Mike Malarkey, and, you know, it's hard when you've been here. You know, so um, I think it's challenging. If you've been in the league, you've been around, you've been on some staffs, and you've met some people, you've been through it, then it's a whole lot different deal. And, and those guys, I would think, you know, I would encourage those guys much more so than those that haven't. Yeah, uh, Pete mentioning Mike Malarkey. The Jaguars just fired their head coach, uh, the mothership, reporting that. It's a tough business because – it used to be, if you look at when Tom Landry first got to the Cowboys or Mike Krzyzewski with Duke, they struggled for sure. years. Sure. Now your window is two years to prove yourself? Is it a little more than that, a little less than that? No, yeah, I got bounced after one at the Jets. So, I mean, I understand what happened to Mike, you know, and it, it takes it takes a good while. Well, you know, I'll give you an example. The, the great coach, uh, John Wooden at UCLA, yeah. he didn't win a national championship till his, six, his 16th year or something like that, <laughs> you know. And, and we all remember him as the best coach that ever lived. Well, he didn't win one for a long, long time. And he didn't suffer as much as some of us but, but along the way. But, uh, you know, it takes, it takes a while to learn how to do this job. But there's so many aspects to it. It's such a challenging, uh, uh, you know, set up and, and all that so um, the guys need they need to get the work they need to figure it out and, and if you believe in somebody and you let them grow then then you have a chance to find out what they are two and three years down into the road and down the road one concern I have is that you know coaches now do something out in the open it's transparent if they're flirting with somebody if it's another college team Brian Kelly's talking to the Eagles uh, you know Charlie Weiss you know there was rumors when he was at Notre Dame and the NFL was calling that, that now you're letting everybody know you're not doing it, you know, in, in an alleyway or, you know, under the veil of darkness here. So everybody's sort of doing the same thing to, you know, it's a money grab that's going on now. I don't know if there's any other way to, to say it. Why, why is it happening? Why are we allowing this to happen? Well, why are we allowing them to, to, to look? Yeah, why? if you have a job, why are you allowed to look? You know, if you're, if you're married, well, you, you're not allowed to look. Yeah, well, I think that's a little different, you know, but but you know, I see it different on the side of the coaches, you know, that they'll get fired, you know, six months down the road, too, because they're not doing right. But so they, they get to, paid. They get paid well, their contract. I agree. I agree. That, that, that's that's legit. But uh, I think guys have a chance to – should have the chance to, to check out their options, and that that's all it is. You should have the freedom to do that. Now, if you're in the league, you can't do it. You can't go from an NFL team <laughs> to an NFL team because there's there's guidelines. But in, from college, the NFL are back the other way. Like, say, you know, Nick Saban went the other way. You know, he, he, he went both ways. He's done that. Um, I, I think I should have a chance to look. The hard part, I mean, Dan, I went through this for so many years at SC with you know speculation of where you might be going, yeah. what you're doing. It's 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 very very hard on you when you're some you know in a, in a college recruiting season and, and and the rumors are going around and 90 percent of what's out there is not the truth, you know, and, and so it's it's difficult. But uh, you know, I, I think there's a, there's a real cool thing if a guy says, hey, look, I've got a contract and I'm not going to talk. I think the guy at Pittsburgh uh, did that this year. You know, I just been here one year and I'm staying. You know, or the guy at Pennsylvania, uh, Penn State, said something like that. You know, that that's a cool uh, s- statement of character. You know, I signed a contract. I'm here for the you know for the long haul that I that I can appreciate. But I also see that you got to take care of your your opportunities and your options, and, and, and so I can see it on both sides of it. You expect to be in the Super Bowl? We got a chance. We have a legitimate chance. We have a very exciting young team. We're, we're doing a lot of really good things. This is not a mystery how we're getting it done. We're playing defense and we're running the football and we're taking care of the ball real well. And we got good special teams groups. We have a chance, you know. And, and uh, this is an extraordinarily hard week, you know. Playing these guys are such a good football team, but we got a chance, man. And I know we're excited about it. But I think you got. It's almost like you're playing Alabama football. Like you, you, you know, it's great defense, and you run the foot, you pound the football, and you have you're opportunistic when you need to when you pass. I, it, I mean, it's we have these spread offenses, Pete. You guys aren't a spread offense in the sense of what we see with these high-powered offenses in college in the NFL. That this is more like Alabama. 
No, we we really we really um you know, you don't think of it when we were at SC, but we were a very balanced attack, and we ran the football like crazy when we were there and played big-time defense and all that stuff. It's the exact same formula here. We want to be a balanced attack, but we've made a tremendous emphasis by the drafting, by getting Marshawn, by the emphasis here with Tom Cable being a great you know, line coach and all, to run the football. We always counted on playing great defense. I've been a defensive guy forever, and I always wanted to make sure that that was the, the, you know, the, the flag we're waving. But when you can complement it with a great commitment to the running game, You've got great style and great formula for football, and that's what we've tried to create. And and the reason that you do that, in my mind, Dan, is that, that you don't know who your quarterback is going to be, you know, and, you, and so you got to have everything else around him so the quarterbacks, the, the that the demands of that position aren't so high when you don't have the guy. So you build defense, you build special teams, you build a running game, and that's how that's the format that we've created and, and we're living with. And it's just as old as the hills in football, but it's awesome. You know, I, I love playing this way because we have toughness and a style about us and we're trying to really build with young kids that, that fit into that mentality uh, before i let you go i'm curious about this win forever uh that you're part of where we're talking about teachers and students and inspiring people and parents uh give me cliff notes version on that well, it's really a, it's a philosophy that is directed at helping people be the best they can be and, and, and to perform at their very best. And, we, you know, everybody likes to win every game and win every deal that you're trying to make and, and always be on the, on the upside of it, but you can't, you can't do that. That's not realistic. But what is realistic is to be striving to be the very best you can be. And we talk about it in Win Forever. You, the only way to do that is you got to always compete. And so uh, it's, it's a mentality. It's a, um, it's a language. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a doctrine of, of how do you can compete to, to work to be your very best and that's all we're doing here we're trying to do it here at, at the Seahawks you know and we're working every day to have a great day and to make it the most uh, profitable day to what, what our end result is, is desired and and, uh, and it's, a, it's just a way of thinking and so it's been fun for us and we like sharing it with people and so at winforever.com you know you can find out about it you know just what we're thinking and we're just sharing it and I don't mind doing it I love coaches you know and I love sharing ideas and concepts but it applies to a lot more than that and, and we're having a lot of fun with it and you can you know we're, we're in the midst of it right here in, in Seattle. Good stuff, Pete. Have fun this weekend. Thanks for joining us. All right, Dan. Great talking to you, buddy. Right. See you. Pete Carroll, Seahawks head coach, uh, winforever.com.